Nardo here is showing how ROPS defaults lobby and lurks on T-side nuke. ROPS has the highest HLTB rating on T-side nuke from teams in the top 20, edging out players like Zaiwu and Simple. He has really good stats on this map being that he is in the lurker role, and nuke is a great map for lurkers to shine. Before we get further into the video, here's a word from my sponsor, GG Predict. If you play CSGO, you gotta try ggpredict.io. It's a training platform to analyze and better understand how you play and what mistakes you make during your Counter-Strike matches. Then, effectively train those aspects that need improvement. You can use it to improve literally every aspect of your game. Team play, nades, pace of your game, or your aim. It not only analyzes your game in so many aspects, but also lets you train on the platform thanks to personalized training plans. How? GG Predict's AI knows exactly what you need to do to become a better player. Each week, you automatically get tailor-made trainings made by the best CSGO athletes who work with GG Predict. It's easy and fun, and you can train right on GGP servers and get all the data from your trainings analyzed. Simply connect your Steam, Faceit, or Esportal account and get your matches instantly analyzed by GG Predict. We almost forgot. If you're playing just for fun, that's great too. You'll love our social features, which allow you to compare with your friends and finally check who really is carrying the team. There are three main roles of the lobby player. First, holding for pushes. Lobby is the best and most common position CTs will push for info. Second, lurk, which can include cutting off rotations. As a lobby player, sometimes you'll be put in positions where you're by yourself and you're given the ability to lurk as your team are grouped up somewhere. Third, getting information, whether that be you hear the CTs rotating down vents, your counter utility use upper, their oppers mini, there's a lot of information you can get playing lobby. These are the main roles, but I'll also cover some more in the video. Let's first talk about door nades, which is one of the most important nade sets from the default lobby player, which is thrown at the start of the round, which is blowing up the door and then and or smoking off the wall, which lands between Tetris and Vent, denying vision from the CTs. The purpose of these nades is to put pressure onto the CTs. CTs can lurk out to Vent and or inside Vent at any time, make CTs expend their smokes to keep doors smoked because then it delays the T's execute and or keeping them from coming out door versus if it wasn't blown up, then CTs can just listen to the sound of the door being open. Having the door blown up, T's can come out anytime unexpectedly. With the door being blown up on T side, you could easily clear close right, you could easily smoke mini, and then you could even contact out without the CTs knowing. It just puts heavy amounts of pressure onto the CTs to try to keep that door smoked. You want to condition the enemies with this nade set, throwing it most of the rounds, keeping them guessing if you're coming out or not to outside vent or vent drop, or even popping through the smoke which is a very common tactic. How do you throw the door lurk nades? Well, when you get into lobby, the moment you see the door area while running, you left click throw the nade, then instantly pull out your smoke and while running forward, aim above the A above the paint, then left click throw. You don't always have to blow up door at the start because CT sometimes send their opera to mini to pick door, or if you want to have your opera to surprise the enemy by going to pick mini by opening it, and then as well as if you're solo lobby and the enemy team is on eco, it's one less position you have to watch, you can always early to mid round nade it afterwards. If you want to throw the door lurk smoke mid round, position at the end of this wall, aim as shown, then run two steps forward and left click throw. As a lobby player, you'll always need to be ready for pushes from everywhere, meaning ramp, hut, and door. CTs can easily aggro all three positions at any time, early, mid, and late round, so you'll always need to be on high alert. It's important to communicate who is watching what if you have multiple players lobby. In this round, Rops is holding HUT, A core door, and BMOS ramp. All three positions are covered and therefore Rops can play this off angle to hold for the HUT push, which happens here from fame. You don't want to miscommunicate and all of a sudden two players are watching the same angle, then get flanked from a certain position. This HUT off angle is very strong to play as CT swinging the corner inside HUT won't expect the T's to be holding from here. The reason why Rops is jiggling was because in case an opera pushes and peaks hut, it makes it harder for him to get shot at versus being still. Also this angle is very good because you're able to dodge any flashes coming your way. The downside to this position is if you're by yourself in lobby like Rops is in this round, you can get flanked from ramp and or door which happens here. Rops blew the door open at the start of the round and he goes to hold this hut off angle and war 2 k pushes door and kills Rops from behind. I'm going to show you some better positions to hold if Rops is by himself or wants to isolate from being shot from behind. 
The first position is backdoor. Like I said earlier, most often than not, CTs will try to expend their utility to lock down door. Playing in this back position behind orange allows him to be able to watch hut as well as door and not get shot from behind. Downside is he can't watch the ramp push. There are many rounds where Mouse do 4-1 and robs the solo lobby while his 4 teammates are all together. When this happens, Rops' favorite position inside lobby is the hold from platform. You can't get shot from behind playing this angle. Rops likes to go back and forth watching door and ramp as the platform gives him cover from hut. He can spot the hut push if the hut players go past the platform and or up the ladder which happens here. He gets one kill before dying. If you're holding from platform early round, you could just focus on ramp. It's highly unlikely the CTs push door as they're most likely going to be mollying it and smoking it, which you see Rops has his attention on ramp almost getting the kill. Rops' position was given up and he decides to go up the ladder to roof and holds for the hut push and then he maneuvers back around into lobby. He repositions to keep the enemy guessing. Anytime you go back to roof and you're the solo lobby player, the CTs could have pushed anytime from door and or trophy. Rops now must take his time to clear lobby. In this round, Mouse take ramp and Rops holding from platform can shift his attention to hut and door since his teammates have ramp and he can't get shot from behind. He's gonna kill Tizzy and pushing hut. One position Rops hardly holds is his back lobby position. I watched around 8 matches and he doesn't play here much when he's by himself. He can get picked early on from many if the CT opera goes aggressive and peeks door. From this position, he can't watch the ramp push. Well, he can if he swings wide, however, there's a chance he gets killed from the hut push. And then also, when oppers push into trophy, when they peak lobby, they'll be holding back lobby, which this duel would favor the CT opper. It's fine to hold this position on an anti-eco when solo, which happens in this round, where Rops only has to worry about hut and ramp since he didn't blow up the door open. If you have multiple players lobby, then it is fine to hold back here, but I'm just saying if you're solo, you shouldn't. The next position Rops likes to hold is inside trophy. He likes to go back and forth between holding for the ramp push and then checking lobby. Early into the round whenever you're going into trophy, CTs like to go through their own smoke to push trophy or they'll get flashed into trophy. So those two plays you need to be cautious of. Also sometimes offers will throw a bad smoke and or fake a molotov and then push ramp so take note of that as well. Because just cause you hear something being smoked or molly, there's a chance that it was a bad utility thrown from the CTs in order for them to push. In the previous clip I showed, Rops wasn't solo, but there are rounds where he is solo and is holding this position in trophy, which is in this round here. Rops kills refresh pushing door, then makes his way ramp to lower as his teammates cross secret to lower. Next, I want to talk about CT aggression from different positions. As the lobby player, you will need to know how CTs could push these positions and the angles they like to hold as well as the tricks. Very common for CT offers to push into hut at the start of the round to peek into lobby which happens here with XA power killing Rops. Here Borup and War 2 k is pushing hut, Borup gets killed and Wara waits a bit before peeking into lobby where he holds this angle which is very common so be aware anytime you're going past hut, any offers push into hut will hold this very tight angle. Moving forward I talked about it earlier about hearing utility being thrown from the CTs. Take it with a grain of salt because it could be used to bait you thinking a certain position is mollied off which happens here with Enz throwing the fake hut molly and Dodo pushes hut and kills Rops. Here's an example where CTs are pushing lobby mid round where they lose outside control and they're also down a player. Mad Lions spotted multiple mouse players outside and they know Rops is most likely solo lobby so Mad Lions will push into lobby from ramp and door. They want to clear lobby so it is one less position they have to worry about and not get pinched on if mouse do end up splitting upper. Also after killing Rops, Mad Lions will have the info that mouse are outside and or coming lower and can base their rotations off this. As a solo lobby player, you just have to be ready for pushes at any time like I stated earlier. The most common push from CTs is called the lobby crunch which you saw in the previous clip which was a little slower in mid round but it is most often than not done as a rush by the CTs from ramp and hut to fight and take lobby and catch the T's off guard. So this is something that you have to be wary of. Rops does kill the player coming out hut, however he is going to die to the ramp player pushing into lobby. Those were positions that Rops likes to hold on a default. It's very important for Rops to not die if he can afford to inside lobby when he is by himself because elsewise his team loses a lot of map control and info. Now let's go into lurking which is the other main component and role of Rops in his lobby default. 
When it comes to lurking lobby, there's multiple avenues to do so. Hut, door, ramp, or even falling back to go outside. I'm going to show you examples of all. The role of lurking is cutting off rotations and or flanking, which we are going to see here in this round. After Rops throws his door nades, he waits door as his team is rushing ramp to lower. He hears the CT rotations through vents, which Rops clears top hut and gets down vent. He flanks control side and kills Tizian, then finds the last kill onto gate site. He got a lot of info door, allowing his team to know that there's players already down lower through vents and that he was able to get down successfully so his team can take it slower, make some presence to allow him to flank. I forgot to mention as well that he did throw a molly inside vent, which you heard burn Tizian as he went down. That's meant to delay any rotations. Mouse will do the fast 401 secret smokes to lower while Rops is lobby and will throw door lurk nades as well as a molly inside vent to slow any upper rotations. He will choose to stay door afterwards and spots config top hut. Immediately knows that he is prone to being flanked and checks it. He will turn his attention to door where he hears config running to vents and accidentally kills Glaive mini instead. He's going to fall back to a different position lobby because Astralis know where he is. And I'm not too sure why Lucky's walking through the door smoke but he gets punished for it. Rops gets left in a 1v1 and he loses the clutch. Another lurk play Rops has for door is coming out to the right of the door outside vent after throwing his door default nades which is blowing up the door and throwing door lurk smoke. He waits for the molly to end from Heroic and then he comes out door as Heroic smoke also gives him cover to do so. The position that is not covered from the smoke is top hut, which Rops is aware of. Katie, not realizing Rops came out near vent, is towards second vent, gets peeked and killed by Rops. Rops then clears many in some of sight, however he's going to fall back to his door in case of any nades or flash pops. Then his team decides that they want to go back out and hit upper, and Rops entries and gets one kill before dying. Here Rops makes the same play as the previous clip on an anti-eco where he blows up door, throws the door lurk smoke, and comes out towards outside vent. His teammates cross fast lower through secret, and Rops hears rotations down vents. But let's not talk about what happens next as he goes down vents as somehow he misses the knife. Fortunately for Rops, it won't cost his team the round as Mouse will go on to win it. You could also use the door lurk nades to get down vents fast, which happens here. Once in vents, Rops will hold for vent rotations as his team crosses into secret to get to lower. Season tries to rotate through vents but doesn't realize Rops snuck his way down here and gets killed. Now his team doesn't have to worry about anyone in vents or towards decon and just have to worry about control side. Rops keeps holding for vent rotations. CT will hardly rotate vents when they know T's are already deep lower in the pro scene. Rops will give it up and he tries to help his team clear and take sight from Decon but then dies. Here's another clip of Rops throwing the door nades and lurking his way into vents fast where he comes out vents in the back halls and holds for the control player who he kills. When you get into vents, besides having to worry about the vent rotations from upper, you also need to be cautious of anyone going fast control from ramp at the start of the round which Rops does here. By killing this player this opens up control side. When his teammates cross into secret and advance lower, they only have to worry about taking sight, not having to expend resource and time clearing control side. Next up is Hut. His team is going to rush ramp while this time around he goes out Hut. In the previous clip we've seen Rops go out door to flake vents. You want to be unpredictable when it comes to lurking. Switch it up on where you lurk to keep the enemy guessing. Another thing to note is that whenever teams are rushing ramp, the most common rotate is through vents for CTs, but also sometimes CTs will want to push into lobby to flank ramp which happens here with Sassel. Rops kills him and the other upper player from Mad Lions had already rotated down lower through vents, which Rops opens up the site. His team is able to fall back from ramp and comes back to lobby to upper, where Rops has full control of it. Bomb gets planted and Mouse win the post plant. Rops is considered the backup plan here with this lurk through hut. In case the ramp rush doesn't work out, Miles can always fall back depending on what information Rops has. This is a textbook 4-1 lurk which can be implemented on all maps. One common one is on Mirage where teams execute A and have one lurker apartments and if the lurker is able to get onto B in clear sight, then the players will fall back to B if they're running into issues on the A site. In this round, his team went outside to lower and Rops' solo lobby makes his way into trophy and plans to flank ramp. He found the right timing as bore up the ramp player rotates, however loses the duel with the TMB rotating from hell. Had he gotten the kill, he was able to cut off some rotations by killing TMB and that's going to make it easier for his team to take lower. Like I said before, cutting off rotations is a part of lurking. Had TMB wasn't there, then Rops flanks lower and most likely kills bore up, which again is a part of lurking. 
both would have helped his team. That's one thing you have to be ready at all times, that when you're flanking ramp or lurking ramp, even though you don't see anyone ramp, you have to be cautious that there could be a CT rotating in from J-Hall and Hell or Heaven at any time. In this round, we see his teammates are crossing the Seeker from Red, and Rops is lurking inside the CT's ramp smoke, and as it fades, he advances as his teammates are spotted outside crossing. He is able to sneak past Gade and kills him, makes his way lower, however his teammates get shut down lower, and he goes on to lose his clutch. You're not always going to find the right timing when lurking ramp, but it's going to make it easier for you if your teammates communicate with you if they're lower and get info that the ramp player is lower and or if they know there's two lower which one is most likely the ramp player. In this round we see Robs try to lurk ramp again. His teammates are going fast secret to lower. Robs will advance once the smoke fades and he gets spotted by Tetsis ramp. Instead of trying to force a lurk ramp, he's going to fall back to lobby and looks to try to go through door down vents which he will hear two players rotating through vents and he's going to decide to gamble and come through the smoke to flank vents, but unfortunately for Rops, there was one more player upper who kills him. Definitely the right play though by Rops. The last position in Rops lurks is outside. It is a backup plan if the other three positions, ramp, hut, and door don't work out. So in this round, his teammates go outside to lower. Robs messes up his door lurk smoke, which now he can't really come out. And the CT smoke door, so door isn't an option. Hut isn't an option as well because he knows there's most likely a player upper still, and that's not a favorable duel with the Tech-9. Same situation with going on towards ramp. So he decides to fall back to outside and hold for secret rotations. None were spotted, and he crosses as his team needs help taking lower. I'm going to skip the rest of the round here as nothing important else happens. The last topic I want to cover is that sometimes Rops wants to take some duels at the start of the round where he looks for picks. He does this most of the time when he has teammates lobby, there are exceptions. You don't want to do this as a solo player then die and lose map control in info lobby. Here we see Rops peeking door then mini and getting the kill into config who is an aggressive player as you can see he was also looking for an aim duel. Now in this round it gets big after his door smoke fades he peeks mini and kills Tapson from behind. You see that Rops doesn't try to peek mini right away after blowing up the door because he knows there's a potential for an opper on the other side. That's going to favor the CT. Typically, CT oppers peeking door at the start from mini will eventually give it up after their initial peek because they don't want to stay too long because of the potential outside pressure. Also, you want to give the lurk smoke some time to bloom because if you peek right away, the opper can spot you. Here's Rops looking for an aggressive pick from Hut. Flames are on Eco and he kills Siphon Heaven. He also does this in buy rounds, which I couldn't find a good round to show of him doing so. The last aggressive peak Rops likes to take is pushing into Trophy to peak ramp. He doesn't have time to throw the smoke after blowing door open because he wants to get into Trophy fast. He is able to beat the smoke before it blooms and here he just holds that angle where he saw before the smoke landed and he kills Siphon, then takes ramp control. Here's the same play from Rops in this clip, blows door open and rushes into Trophy to look for the aim dual ramp, gets smoked out however beats the smoke and holds the angle where the CT would peek from. He sprays when the smoke blooms however no one is there. Now here comes the heads up play from Rops. Anytime you're going past Hut or expose yourself to Hut, there could be an upper holding which the awareness from Rops is insane when he falls back from Trophy into lobby. He kills Searson with a nice shot. To wrap up, I showed how Rops defaults and lurks lobby on T-side nuke. You saw the multiple lobby positions, lurks, and peaks, and plays Rops has in his arsenal that helps him to be one of the best players on T-side nuke. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment on who you want to see next and or what position and map. Till next time, Nardout here. Peace.